Manchester United were defeated on penalties in the FA Community Shield and the United Twins need to speak about it. Blessings everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're hitting that like button, subscribing if you're new, sharing to your friends and frenemies. Please and thank you. Gracias. Two late goals. First from Alejandro Garnacho, giving United the lead with eight minutes of regulation time to go. And then Bernardo Silva equalising for City in the last minute of regulation. Resulted in a penalty shootout in the FA Community Shield, in which our rivals were able to get the better of us. Gene Sancho and Johnny Evans didn't convert on our end, and that was the difference, with some or none shenanigans along the way. <laughs> However, prior to all of those things happening, I felt that if Manchester United were more clinical and had the personnel confident enough to execute and take advantage of those situations it probably would have been a different outcome and i know we are speaking hypothetically here but as much as city hit the post in the first half had their spells also we had the higher percentage cha uh, percentage chances rashford with a couple i think the one where garnacho squares to him should be a goal at least on target. Ahmad's great work on the right leading to a pass across the face of goal and Mason Mount can't quite reach. Scott McTominay failing to create any contact <laughs> at all from a corner kick as Rashford nods the ball into his path. Three big chances at least. The stats, I think, said we missed two, but I, I counted three. There were positives and negatives all over the performance with it being the final game of pre-season. Uh, of course, there are still things to work on, but from a chance creation standpoint, I am at least pleased to see how the team acts with more conviction in scenarios where they need to take advantage of the opposition's shortcomings defensively. Unfortunately, the end product still lacks, and I do currently question whether that will change with Xerxes and Hoyland when the Dane eventually returns. Eric Ten Hag did have some comments prior to the Shield about Joshua Xerxes saying that he will have to make a step up and we will have to help him which suggests he's not quite ready to start as of yet but with time those circumstances will change once he strings together some training sessions and gets up to speed. Of course he came back late after going with the Netherlands to the Euros. Two major positives in this game that I picked out were the productive performances from our right hand side. Mainly Amagialo and Alejandro Garnacho in the second half once he came on. Both making profound impacts in the game, looking sharp, direct. See, and you tweeted out, I think, in the first half that Ahmad has that right hand side yeah. on lock. And he may still, but Garnacho made a strong argument. Can also remember that he can play on the left hand side too which poses a threat to Marcus Rashford and Jaden Sancho of course returning this season and looking to really find his identity in a Manchester United shirt. One thing uh, about those two guys is that one has lost their swagger identity perhaps looks mentally drained in the latter while going away and refining happiness in his previous home now he needs to buckle up for the ride and embrace the reality of what can be achieved from here on out with wishful thinking, of course. Early days, though. An interesting development after the final was the progression of both Aaron Wan-Bissaka's move to West Ham, which was confirmed, and he will be having the medical tests on Monday now. Um, and... The deals for Mateus De Ligt and Nusea Masraoui, both departing Bayern Munich and will be travelling over on Monday as well. When you'll probably see this video. Two targets who, for the last few weeks, I feel United have been carefully negotiating to get the best possible deal with both clubs, agreeing a combined probably around £50 million deal with add-ons that may increase the fee in the future. Both signings welcome at this current time with both of our left-backs still out. Luke Shaw's definitely a doubt. Tyrone Malassi is still away from being back. Leecher was deployed there for the community shield. But ideally, we need him in the middle orchestrating from that centre-back position. And of course, with us already being short of choices, the lip will offer added strength in numbers and quality. It also seems that Bruno Fernandes is close to extending his current deal at Manchester United. Okay, okay. Solidifying his commitment and importance to the current project. In May, he was 
probed about this very topic and he spoke honestly about wanting to be valued and I think this shows just that. No doubt about it, he is a, a polarizing player to say the least, but one that I have come to appreciate because of his leadership, because of his commitment, determination and the ability to change games on the blink of an eye. Yes, Bruno Fernandes has his shortcomings, there are many players on that te on this team that have their shortcomings, but at the end of the day, he is a special character, a special type of athlete, and, and, and those players are very, very hard to come by. Yeah, and, and Bruno will be staying contractually up to 2027, I believe, possibly in next year, if all goes well. That is the future, though, and, and now United must focus in the present in preparation for our first league game of the season against Fulham. Mm. Face Sevilla, Hoffenheim and Benfica in pre-season themselves. Los Paulinia, Joao Paulinia to Bayern Munich, Tosin Adorabayo to Chelsea and Bobby De Cordova reed who went to newly promoted Leicester City. I think bringing in an Emil Smith-Rowe from Arsenal could be a wild card for them. Someone who will be hungry to take this fresh opportunity with ideally less pressure and fitness that has eluded him up to this point. Marco Silva remains the coach of course and when we all look back at last season's head-to-head -head, both sides had victories with the latest fixture in February ending 2-1 at Old Trafford to the Cottages so hopefully we can avenge that result and kick off this Premier League campaign the right way. If you were to ask me of any expectations I, I wouldn't really know what to say at this point and that's perhaps why we Ended up creating music. Another season. Oh man. So many changes lost in effects for the future ahead to behold new freedoms. At least we wish for freedom. Instead of a, a typical season preview hey. video. But hey, make sure you check that out, by the way. Check out the tune. Oh, come on, peace. Fire. Link will be in the description and, and should be at the top of the channel's homepage as well. For now, though, make sure you're hitting that like button. Telling us how you're feeling going into the new season. Sharing to your friends and frenemies. And until the next time, we'll see you lot soon. Pre-season injury problems happening hastily Bad luck or results of poor preparation blatantly Incapably, the team deficient painfully Have to follow an omission sacredly New signings filling up vacancies Improvements working patiently Gracefully, can't fire our shots so aimlessly With a blatancy to expose weakness The aim of a grueling season to put together successful sequence is